hear me? Yeah. Okay. So this is officially day one with Pawnee. And she's been, she came here last night. She did a lot of pacing, a lot of worrying because she's in a new environment. So I'm actually surprised right now she's following me. I did come out to see her for a few minutes this morning and just try to get a little bit of a connection. And so I'm very happy that she's following me right now. So she's starting to relax a little bit. And I didn't want to ask a whole lot of her until I can get some connection with her. So this is very nice. Good girl. So my goal today is just to get some connection, some relaxation, and some responsiveness, and to try to get her to look at me as a leader. So she just had a really nice sigh right there. So that's really good. Good girl. So I'm just gonna walk around with her for another minute. And just see if she keeps following me or if she gets disconnected from me. And at the same time, when I have her following me, I don't want her to invade my space. I, I want her to know I have a personal bubble. But if, I, if I'm too persistent about things, I'm gonna lose her. So right there, I just lost her. I'm just gonna face her hind in here and see what she thinks. She wants to leave me, so I'm gonna help her. So I just swung the rope a little bit towards her hind end. So if she passes me, then I will swing it again. So now I, I lost that connection that I had. So I'm going to wait for her to look at me and think back towards me. So I'm standing off center here of the round pen so that it's kind of like a little uh, claustrophobic right here. So she has choices. I've given her choices. She could pass by me which wouldn't be so comfortable, like right there. Or she could stop. She can turn around. I'll help her leave. And I'm just going to hang out right here until she makes a new decision. So she doesn't want to think towards me, and that's okay. I'll just give her opportunities here. I'm going to back up just a little bit, see if that will help her. So she's already learned that passing me is not a good thing. And the reason I'm standing over on this side is because she wants to be over here next to the other horse. So I'm kind of claiming that space. There, she looked at me, so I'm going to back up. Good girl. Good girl. So now I'm getting a little bit of the connection back, and I could lose it any moment. So I make sure when I turn away from her for her to follow that I turn my body away from her and not into her, because that could feel like pressure right now. So I like it to be her decision to decide to connect with me and join up with me. I don't want to force it to happen. I don't want to tell her she has to. Because if it's her idea, it's going to stick better. So I'm just going to stop here for a minute and relax and let her feel good about being with me. Because out going around the round pen is uncomfortable. It doesn't feel good, but f being with me feels good. I want her to feel good when she's with me. Good girl. So I'm going to clamp my space a little bit and ask her just to back up a little bit. Good. It's okay, Tinkerbell. 
So I'm going to walk and see if she follows me. Good. Tinkerbell, it's okay. So there she left me. I just kind of walked behind her a little bit. She decided to turn and face me. So I retreat. So I reward that. Good. 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 So I'm going to go ahead and put her online now. Potentially, we'll see. Unless she leaves me. I want to have permission to put the halter on her. So I'm going to pet her on the neck first with the outside of my hand because it's less threatening. And I'm going to see if I have permission. So here she turned towards me. I'm going to put my hand on top of her neck and see if I have permission. She backed up a little bit, so I'm not going to do it yet. I want this, I, this is a two-way conversation. I want to have permission. I don't want to just do things to her. Good. 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 So I'm just going to walk away and see if she follows me here. Turn the other direction so that I can get to her left side here. Stop. Pet her. So she kind of shifted her body away from me. So that was telling me that I don't have permission yet. If I do it right now, it's going to be better every day after this. But if I just make things happen, that I ruin the relationship and the rapport, and she doesn't have any trust in me. She doesn't think I'm listening to her if I do that. So I want her to know that I'm listening. I see when she has a problem, I acknowledge it, and I try to help her through it. Good. Good. So that's just a little bit of anxiety there, playing with it. Good. I'm just going to pet her with it. See if that helps her. Good. Yeah. I would like her to lower her head a little bit. Good. Or turn towards me like that. That's showing me that, that she's being a participant in the haltering. She's a two year old. Oh, almost three years old. Appaloosa, about 16 hands. Good. She's a little bit curious about me, but I don't want her to start nipping, so I kind of have my fingers there to let her know that she can only come so far towards me. But she's running into that pressure. I'm not poking her. I'm not going towards her. I'm just saying there's like a wall there and you can't come in right there. That way she thinks she did it to herself and it wasn't me doing the, anything to her. Now she's licking her lips. That's good. So I just put my finger in the way so she can't have her mouth all over me. But if I direct the pressure towards her and I start going after her, then she's going to take it personally. Now I'm going to ask her because she wants to invade my space. I'm going to tell her that I have a bubble right here. And she needs to respect my space. Good. 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 So if I feel her starting to get closer to me, I'm going to turn around and I'm going to tell her to stay back. Good. I know. So when I turn around, I raise my hands. It kind of feels like a wall. It just kind of blocks them from coming into me. So she's really blinking a lot. Her head's looking around. She's trying to figure out what to do with that information. So she needs some repetition. I did do this a couple times yesterday when she arrived. So she kind of has an idea about it. 
but it's it's not set in stone by any in it at all yet. So so I feel like she's a little bit close. I'm gonna back her up. This actually helps build a connection because she realizes that I, I, I have a bubble. I'm out in front. I'm taking care of her safety out here. Um, I have, I... I try to back her up. Um, I, I when I plant her feet over here, that's where she's supposed to stay. And as she comes forward, I put her back. So I'm very particular about everything that I do, and I'm particular about how she responds to everything that I do, and that she upholds her responsibilities. And right now, her responsibility is to stay where I put her until further notice. So this is really nice. She's doing a lot of yawning, a lot of licking. So she's finding value in what I'm doing here. And horses need boundaries. Once they have boundaries, and I'm very clear about it, I, I'm not, um, I'm particular without being critical. And when she understands her boundaries, they start feeling better because they know what's expected of them. She knows that I'm going to let her know when she's wrong and when she's right. I'm going to always give her a release of pressure when she does the right thing. So she's always going to feel like a winner. So that was a lot of yawning and licking and stuff. So now we're going to move on. I want to, I want to be sure, I want to be clear that she understands. She's getting too close. That she understands what I'm asking before I end um, this task and go on to another task. Otherwise, she's not going to remember it. She's just going to be more confused because it didn't make sense to her. So I have to do enough repetition for her to understand the meaning of this. And see, she doesn't know yet that she's supposed to stay back a certain distance because she starts coming in to me. So right now she's doing better there. She's starting to go, oh, there's something about this, about me getting too close to her. Because she has a tendency to... <coughs> invade people's space. So this is going to teach her not to. Stay there. Stay. Yep. I'm going to ask her to back up just a little bit. Good. And let her think about that again. So that time she was a lot better. She, you know, she tried to keep more distance and she didn't think so much about invading my, my personal space. And she's doing a lot of blinking and she's really thinking about this and processing this. So that's really good. Her head just came down, which means that she's come, uh, coming off of adrenaline. She's relaxing. The shaking is her uh, releasing tension. So it's all really good. So yesterday, yesterday when she arrived, the, the things I'm doing now are the things that I did when she arrived. Um, and I just want to repeat that today so that she, she has more clarity, more understanding, and um, she starts feeling more connected to me, looking to me for leadership, more relaxation there, you can see. She's really letting go of a lot of tension there by yawning and licking and shaking her head. And then you know, the other thing I want is I want responsiveness. So I haven't worked a whole lot of responsiveness yet but those are the three things i'm looking for right now connection relaxation and responsiveness and so i like what i'm seeing already now she's really trying to keep her distance there that's good so I don't have to turn around so harshly if she's paying attention. As I go on, I can start stopping slower and turning around without being so exaggerated what she understands. 
But at first I have to do that because she's, she's, you know, not really thinking about stopping, not really thinking about staying out of my space. But as she starts to get it, my, my, uh, the pressure I use gets more and more mild all the time. Good. So I feel like she's doing a little better on that. I don't want to drive her crazy on it and do a whole lot. I just want her to have that the basic understanding right now. Good. So that was really nice right there. She took a step forward, she rethought it, and she took a step back. So she realized that she's not, it, she, she thought about coming into my space like that, and then she went, never mind. So that's where her brain starts becoming a part of this whole conversation. So I really like that. So I'm going to ask her to start moving her front end to the side. Good, good. I'm going to check the hind end. Very good. Check the front end again. Very good. Check the hind end. I like that. So she's a little more resistant on that side. I'm just going to hold the stick up here and I'm going to wait for her to make the decision. Good. Check the hind end, see if she can move that away. So I'm losing her attention right there. She's focused on the horse next to her over here and she wants to make sure that horse isn't leaving her. There. So I want her to move sideways like that with her front feet. Good. Ask again because this side seems to be a little harder for her. Good. Hind end. Now I'm going to ask her to go out in the circle. Push her shoulder out. Push her shoulder out. So when she looks at me, I just redirect her. Because she's learning right now. So right now she just needs a little extra information. I'm going to point with my finger and then I'll lift the stick if she doesn't respond. I'm going to point and then lift my stick and push it towards the shoulder to push her shoulder out. So about every half lap here, she's stopping. So what I want is, oh, right there it was a quarter lap. I want to see some improvement. I want to see her get the idea that when I put her on a circle, she needs to go in a circle and maintain gait and maintain direction until further notice. I'm going to point and then use my stick. So when she's on the circle right now, she's disconnected. She's looking outside of the, the round pen and she's not keeping a connection with me. And I don't expect a lot right but now. I don't expect a lot because she's learning. I'm not looking for the whole picture right now. I'm going to ask. There we go. Let her poop. So I'm going to block right there with the stick. I said, you can't go that way. You have to go to the right. So I want her mind to get into the game. We're circling. So right there, she, re she dropped her head. She started to relax into it. I'm always looking for where can I reward the horse. And she did more than a lap before, without stopping or checking in with me. So that was really good. So I'm going to reward that. So I'm rewarding the relaxation and I'm rewarding her maintaining gait and maintaining direction. It's just the beginning. We're just starting off with the basics. And then again, she's lowering her head. She's licking her lips. She's yawning. These are all great, great signs. And so when, when I give her a break like this, I want her to, I want to give her that time to blink, to yawn, to lick her lips, because then she's got a chance of sticking it in her memory bank, 
processing the information, bringing her emotions back down to normal before I ask for something else. So if I do this, I, there's less repetition that I have to do. But if I quickly move her from one task to another or back out on the circle again, she's not going to retain the information there as well. So this time I'm going to ask her to go to the left and see how that is. But she's still licking her lips, so I'm giving her a moment. And she's still shaking her head, which is just releasing that, that adrenaline. So I'm going to point slowly with my finger, lift my stick, push it towards her shoulder, and ask her to go. Good. Good. So see, it's not even a half a lap before she's changing, either stopping and looking at me or changing direction. So she's having a little bit of trouble. We just work her through it. No big deal. I, what I'm trying to provide is clarity. That time, all I had to do was point with my finger when she looked at me and she continued on. So if I don't do things in phases and I only use my tools, she's not going to ever get any better. But if I can get to the point where I just point and then I use my stick if she doesn't respond, pretty soon all I have to do is use my finger and she's going to know exactly what that means. Point. Shoulder. So I'm not going to ask for a trot until I can get her understanding what I want at the walk, along with relaxation. Otherwise, I'm setting it up to fail. And we have some guinea fowl visiting from the neighbors. <laughs> So here, see, she, she's having a little bit of trouble understanding. She gets to the end of the rope, she pulls on it, or she looks at me and wants to stop. Good. I'm giving her a chance right there. I wanted to see if she would continue going before I asked her to keep going. So I have to allow her to make mistakes in order for her to learn. If I always correct her before she makes a mistake because I'm anticipating her making a mistake, she's not going to get the meaning of it and she's not going to learn or get any better. Now I'm going to swing the rope behind her towards her, her uh, thigh and push that energy forward to tell her she needs to keep going. She's changing direction. I'm, I'm not going to allow her to change direction. I'm just going to block her from changing direction and ask her to continue. So I'm looking for her mind to really get into the game here. She's pulling on me there. I'm not going to allow her to pull on me. She's pulling on me there. I'm going to do something about it and say, don't pull on me. Sorry about that. Dogs chasing guinea fowl. <laughs> so see how she still is not improving right here? She's still having trouble? I'm going to wait. I want her to relax into it and go, oh, I understand what my job is. Good. Good. 
So every time she gets to the end of the lead rope and she pulls on it, I'm not pulling back on her. She's putting pressure on herself. My hand stays exactly where it is. So that, that the, she's putting pressure on herself, like right there, she did. I just, hit, I just keep my hand still. And I want her to find the comfort. If she stays on the circle, like right there, very nice. She's not leaning, but I did lose her there, mentally. But I just asked her to turn and face, so um, I wanted to continue on that so that I didn't confuse her. Even though I started to lose her at that moment, I still got her back by doing that, so that's fine. And now she's did a really nice snot, sigh, and she's licking her lips, so that's really good. So today's all about her just um, starting to relax here, asking some basic things of her, seeing if she can understand and respond without fear, uh, seeing if she can relax a little bit, connect with me a little bit, um, and be responsive to my requests. And she's doing pretty good. And every day I will up the game a little bit. I'll ask, if with each game that I play with her, I will ask for a little bit of improvement every day. And when I get a little bit of improvement, I will reward her, let her know she did a really great job. And that way she feels like a winner after every um, uh, task that we do. Good. So the one other thing I'm going to do, which I was trying to do some back, having her back a little bit yesterday when she first got here, but the whole property became scary to her because there was a lot going on and it was really hard to back her somewhere because there was no safe place in her mind that I could back her. So she's barely backing. I want her to think about the backing. I want her to get a little bit of rhythm with it. And really think about the backing. Good. So I leave her alone when she starts doing the right thing, but I never asked her to stop. I'm going to move her that way. Good. So I give a little bit of wiggle if she does what I Little wiggle. She's doing it. I quit. And then she stops. I wiggle again. But I'm trying to give her a chance to think her way to the answer herself. I want her to continue backing. And she doesn't know yet. I'm new to her. Don't leave me. So I'm going to bump her nose back if she tries to leave me. All I want is a backup. And she can throw her head around. She can get, you know, have a little temper tantrum if she wants, but she still has to do her job. I'm not asking roughly, if that's a word, roughly. <laughs> roughness. I'm not asking with roughness. So she's still not thinking backwards. She takes a couple steps and then she quits and she's not, like, her mind isn't in it. I want her to... Lower her head a little bit. I want her to have a little bit of rhythm with that. And mentally be into the backup. Uh, 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 don't leave me. Don't leave me. Thank you. You still got to do it. She just, there was just a little, it's probably hard to see with the camera, but there was a little bit of softness. Her head came down just a little bit. And I felt like a little bit more smoothness. It was only for a step, 
But it was improvement. I've always got to look for where can I reward. So it's going to be just a little bit at a time. But now she's more relaxed. Her head's lower. She's licking her lips a lot again. So she's really um, processing a lot of what we're doing today, which is good. Her mind's getting um, more into being here in the round pen versus everything else that's going on on the outside. Kitty fell, fell screaming and flying around. <laughs> so this is where I'm going to end with her today because I just wanted to kind of refresh what, you know, because yesterday when she arrived, it was kind of more of an assessment. Where are you at? What's going on? She was a little worked up because of the new environment. Um, so basically, this is what I did yesterday. We didn't have the cameras going, but um, it was just kind of an assessment. Today, I wanted to say, can you do it now with a little bit more relaxation? And she did. So I'm happy. And then every day forward, it's just going to be starting to improve what we're doing here and adding a lot more games and activities in with it.